Computers keep changing the world, but their power and safety is limited by their rigid design. The T2 Tile project works for bigger and safer computing using Living Systems principles. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. This is the 27th T Tuesday update. Let's get into it. Uh, last week we were <clears throat> confirming that we were going to be able to do Rojas reduction of hazardous substances when we make the boards with ETS, and we fixed the damn 3D printer <laughs> after all this time. Uh, uh, this week we have kind of a big uh, milestone. I'll tell you about it. Uh, in the coming week, um, I need to finish the uh, reviewing of the other papers in the ALF conference that I signed up for. Uh, and then there's also a bunch of other stuff which is, is in the process as well uh, that I'll talk about as we go along. So let's get into it. <sighs> on the manufacturing front, we had finally at long last gotten to all green on the parts that we needed to assemble the tiles themselves. <clears throat> all, everything that was going to be soldered to the circuit board plus the circuit board itself we had and uh, I had spoken to ETS and they had said yes we're gonna we'll, we'll do lead free uh, uh, and so forth so uh, I was like you know <clears throat> is it possible to uh, might it be possible to get started uh, next week and ETS says, yes, we still have availability. So it meant it was time to actually get the parts together and take them over there. So I, uh, I made up a, a little packing sheet um, with all of the stuff that was going to be needed, the, the circuit boards plus everything that was going to be soldered to the circuit board, which means not the beagle bones of greens themselves, not the LCD, pet dis not the displays, <clears throat> but everything else. Uh, <coughs> um, was all going to get packed up, and, and we started packing it up. Uh, we we filled a box. Uh, uh, in the end, we filled five boxes, uh, uh, and here it is uh, sitting in the house. Uh, uh, the connectors, the surface mount parts, the through hole parts, and and this square box down here is the circuit boards themselves. Uh, the 200 circuit boards that we got from PCB Way several weeks ago. Uh, uh, we put it all in the trunk of the car and we drove over to ETS. Now, all previous times when I had vis uh, visited ETS, I had gone through this door, which leads to the offices. Uh, but this time it was time, well, yeah, and there I am, uh, uh, looking cranky as usual. But actually, I'm, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> excited uh for the first time we went through this door uh which leads to the manufacturing uh part of the building and and here's our t2 tile five boxes of parts inside ets uh, along with the packing list I've filled out and so forth now. <clears throat> I'd never been in this side. It was very interesting to look around. Uh, Robert, the owner, uh, took us around a little bit and showed us some of the stuff. I took just a couple of pictures. Uh, I, I'm going to get back there when we get to the point of actually manufacturing some of these and try to get some video or just for the record. Uh, uh, but that'll be coming up, uh, well, we'll see, pretty soon now. Uh, uh, <clears throat> so... This is uh, one of his pick-and-place machines. Uh, uh, it's uh, apparently an older one. I wouldn't even know how to evaluate it. But uh, again, the whole point of the design of the T2 tile was no heroic engineering. So uh, an old machine is perfect. <laughs> I really don't think the tolerances are all that incredibly tight. Uh, uh, so if you haven't seen uh, one of these things before, they're really quite amazing. Uh, uh, there's uh, this. There's a track that goes along here uh, that's essentially like a conveyor belt. So the board comes in from a previous machine or gets fed in manually by the operator. So the previous step with the stencil and the squeegeeing of the paste is done before here. That there's a machine sitting right next to this that I didn't get a picture of that does the <coughs> squeegeeing uh, automatically. They also have a manual one that I don't, we don't know how it's going to work uh, for the particular, for, for the T2 tiles. In any event, the, then the board slides in here, uh, comes down these rails, uh, sits up wherever it is, uh, and this thing has got three pick and place units uh, uh these uh all these racks down here there's another picture uh here it is you can see better <clears throat> 
connected to each one of these racks is one of these reels and on each of these reels is the tape containing a teeny teeny tiny service mount part uh, uh, so the idea is these things come over robotically they they come down they pick up the next one from the uh, whatever the appropriate row is for what what part they need they spin around to get it to the position they're going to do take it to the correct position on the board and place it they pick and place uh, um, <clears throat> according to the instructions that are programmed into the thing and if it's all been super optimized <clears throat> with putting the the reels in the correct order for what they do the thing can actually pick up multiple parts simultaneously uh, off of multiple different reels again whether it'll get that optimized for the pitiful little 150 200 tiles who knows uh, uh, but it's probably this is the machine that it's going to go uh, um, since uh, we were over there and dropped it off uh, um, before we can actually do this I'm, I'm having ETS actually make the final stencil according to their own specifications because you know the stencils I was getting with these little things like that the stenc stencils they use are these big things that have cast aluminum frames and they go into a, a, a you know seriously rigid mount machine that needs the frames to be a certain size so I said look you know just have them do it for whatever it is two hundred dollars three hundred dollars something like that depending on uh, how exacting the requirements requirements the teacher tile are I don't think they're that bad who knows but so they're now working on that and in fact I've got I got some uh, email uh, later after we had dropped this stuff off saying you know, asking questions about the pods file that KiCad produces they would rather have a CSV a spreadsheet uh, so I converted that and we'll see if that's all going well I'm terribly afraid that somehow some numbers will get dropped and that I mean I guess the, the real point is that you know when I'm thinking as a as a computer scientist I, I imagine everything has to be absolutely perfect but of course this is a much more robust process because it's human in the loop uh, you know they're going to try to program this machine but then they're going to try it and <laughs> run one through and say you know did the parts land where they're supposed to land and if something's gone wrong uh, hopefully uh, you know the, it'll be obvious if it misses where it's supposed to go if something got rotated or whatever hopefully it, uh, you know I'll be there or something that we can test the first few of these things and we'll find out that it doesn't work so it's not like it's ballistic from the moment that I change a spreadsheet number to uh, yes, your fifteen thousand dollars is gone, uh, uh, and there's no way back. So we shall see. But the tile manufacturing has begun. Uh, it's possible uh, if all goes well that the assembly could actually start next week again probably not until after T Tuesday uh, uh, update but who knows uh, um, we shall see it depends how long it takes to get to the point of being able to send out the stencil apparently his stencil people take a couple of days uh, uh, we shall see but it was really exciting just to see all the machinery. You know, I've seen pick and place machines before, but never ones that were about to be doing our stuff. So uh, that's the manufacturing front. <laughs> um, on the 3D printing scene, <clears throat> last week we got the thing fixed as far as the min temp bed error goes. Haven't seen a sign of it yet. We're cranking out the cases again, so much so <clears throat> that we were essentially running out of the, the plastic that we're using for the Prism and Galaxy Black. Uh, <clears throat> so put in an order for a couple more rolls uh, uh, with the Prusa folks uh, but that was going to take a week or so so needed to do something else uh, uh, so I you know I, I was kind of excited now to have the <laughs> the printer working well so I tried some other stuff uh, uh, check this out this is just one of these things that you download from Thingiverse you know uh, you know, guess what this is here uh, um, it's one of these uh, Serpinski pyramids oh, like that look at this it's a mathematical thing and it's really wild if you watch it printing because essentially it's a single line winding in and out and in and out and up and over and down and around the whole thing uh, uh, as it's one of those things you know as if the entire universe was a single electron zipping all around uh, acting like uh, all of the rest of the material that's kind of what this thing is like uh, um, and uh, it, it it came out great and and, and, and here it is yeah, let's take a good look at it uh, uh, you know, 
it's it's you know fractal and recursive and you know it's incredibly light uh but it, it has no supports even though it's got all these big empty overhangs uh, um it's very cool and you know now we're, we're never going to see it uh, uh here with all this light uh, uh but also uh, uh it's uh it's it's glow in the dark uh, uh so it's obviously the concentration of pyramid power in the universe right here so that was very fun, uh, but you know there was actual stuff that needed to be uh, printed that might not need to be in the galaxy, uh, the Prusman Galaxy Black, and in particular that was these DO connectors. In addition to the tiles, we need the intertile connectors. We talked about them several times. We've seen this one. This is the PD connector, the power plus data. Those are the ones that are yellow in that picture that go in the within a power uh, within a lotus within a power zone. Uh, we we also need these DOs, the data only, that are going to connect between power zones. And my original idea, I'm not 100% sure if I'm still sold on this, was to use a different color plastic for the DO connectors to sort of visually set off the power zones. Now, the reason I hesitate about it is I'm not sure how important the power zones are in the grand scheme of the T2 tiles, the grid, what's going on on the displays and so forth. So I'm not sure, but I was thinking about it. So uh, originally I was imagining that the, the data only connectors would be gray. So I, I designed this one. This is a similar thing to the other one. So I did print up a bunch of them. Uh, uh, so here's a sheet of the DO connectors getting started up. Uh, it's uh, 18 of them, three rows of six. Uh, uh, it takes it took about 12 hours for this to build up. Oh yeah, I didn't mention that. Uh, you know this thing. This, this is a record for me for the amount of time on a single print. It was about a day and a half. Uh, um, so these took just 12 hours, uh, then they had to be assembled afterwards. Uh, again, the uh, the strap that goes underneath, the tab for pushing down on it, and then the, the cap that locks the two of them together. Uh, um, I, I made a box full of them, I did another run, and, and this will hold us for a while, <laughs> no problem. Uh, and eventually, uh, oh yeah, actually this, this led to, uh, there was a comment uh, on last week's video from Sam Gentle, uh, uh, one option for the connectors was would be to have a specialized tool that hooks around and under them uh, uh, so like a plastic forceps so that you could just have a single remover rather than having all of these zillions and zillions of these guys especially these ones that I was talking about last week that kind of protrude up above the surface of the tile uh, 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 thank you for the comment uh, uh, Sam uh, uh, it served to remind me uh, how long I've been working on the T2 tile. So I, had, I went back in uh, my old directories and dug up this picture uh, uh, from, uh, from the summer of 2017 when I was doing just that. So I, I had designed these little plastic little pincer things with the little notches in them that would grab onto the sides of the, uh, the inner tile connectors to pull them out and so forth. And and eventually I moved away from this approach to the individual connectors that you see now um, not for any fundamental reason but just sort of a death of a thousand little design cuts the way this thing these things kind of happen uh, uh, part of the problem is is that when the tiles are actually hooked up they're quite close together so there isn't that much room for that much width of these forceps to go in between so they have to be fairly narrow uh, uh, and yet they have to be able not just to pull to yank them out but to exert pushing force on them and these designs would not push very well because they didn't have enough of a foot I mean one of the things that this additional tab does is it gives you a flat plate so that you know you've got the strap on the bottom when you're pulling and you've got this flat plate this kind of shoe that gets you a nice firm footing when you're pushing these things didn't have that you could imagine taking the four seps and sort of building a, a bit of a shoe up above them you have to be careful to get it all to fit in but then it's hard to 3d print because you got it, you're, you don't have one side down and so forth. All of these problems could probably be solved, and then you end up in the situation where you know, oh, where's my damn wrench? Where you never have an ITC wrench when you got it. So in the end, I, I said, let's have it travel together. We'll see. But uh, 
it really did just remind me how long this road has been just to get to where we are here. I, I dug up a couple of other even older pictures. Uh, this is one of the early board designs. You know, the board started out with mounting holes in the corner before it turned into those crazy little notch things and then turned back into mounting holes. <laughs> uh, uh, but in particular, the key here is you can see if you look close that in this one, some of the intertile connectors on the board like this one are female and this one and some of them are male like these guys over here because the original idea was that it was going to be three male headers and three female headers and the intertile connector was going to be a inter interchanger a, a one male and one female so you just lined it up and put it in whichever way you did that turned out to have it was a cool idea and, and you couldn't go wrong with it, uh, but it turned out that it made it really difficult if you wanted to also support using ribbon cable, because in the ribbon cable world, when you have male and female connectors, the, the male and female, the, they switch the pairs uh, relative to each other. So if you put a male on one end and a female on the other end, you do not get a straight through wiring. You get all of the pins, each pair of pins being swapped. I killed a, <laughs> a beagle bone green, or maybe two. Uh, uh, you know, many bottoms died to bring us this information. So in the end, I said, okay, we're going to make all of the things that are in the position of a ribbon cable be all the same gender, so they'll all be straight through. Uh, uh, and instead, we'll use these polarized rib parts that are so hard to get to. Got to move on. Uh, uh, all right, and, and what's this? Oh, yeah, this is an even earlier version of the inner tile connector where the idea was you were going to just be able to reach in with your fingernails and grab it around a nice rounded edge and pull it out. That was before I understood the actual height of the LCD and the surface of the tile compared to where the inner tile connector was going to be. All right. Uh, uh, but eventually the, uh, the, uh, the, it's, it shipped. It arrived yesterday. We've got it. We, now we've got two more, uh, kilograms of the Galaxy Black. This is be plenty to finish the tiles. It's possible we may even finish them by next week. We shall see, but we're back in business. All right. Uh, uh, now I'm not going to have time to really go all through this, but as far as the ITCs go, we need this, the circuit board plus these polar rise female headers that I was just talking about. We need hundreds of these things and I do not want to solder them all up. The idea was to try to get someone, one of these, to do, not just PCB manufacturer, but PCBA assembly. Uh, uh, and so I have now tried to get a quote uh, from Seed Studios. Uh, first, you put in the, the information for the PCB uh, and you can look at it with the Gerber file. So this is the, the PD one. I actually, I did uh, make this gap a little bit wider uh, in the design so there'll be a little bit more clearance uh, uh, we'll see how that goes but now you go on to the second step and you add uh, a spreadsheet with the parts that you want to them to put on so this uh, this part number SFH uh, 11 blah 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 that's the digikey Y pay less Sullins connector uh, that they want 68 cents a piece for and we're talking 900 of them uh, uh, so this total quote was 1500 well $1,400 <sighs> Uh, um, I don't, an operation fee of $434 assembly cost. Where, I don't even know where all this stuff came from. Uh, uh, and the 60 cents, they were, they were charging me more than I expected because I was expecting it to be like 57 cents each. Cause we're going to need more than a thousand in the end, but I was only specifying 450 times two is 900. So it should have been like 64 cents. Seed studios was quoting me like 68 cents. Not sure what was going on there. When I updated it to let's do 500 of them then to get the price break no it changed now instead of actually giving me a quote at all it said it was unable to match it why because seed studios only said they had 956 available to ship they didn't have a thousand i mean it's very impressive that uh that the seed studios can can figure this all out in real time but it doesn't actually solve my problem uh, uh i'm gonna skip this stuff um, but I ended up coming up with a part number for another company. I don't know if this part number is correct, but 
but I gave it to Seed Studios. I also gave it to PCB Way. PCB Way, these guys are, are, are sort of, their website is much more humble in the sense that they say, you know, if you can upload it, upload it, or you can skip this step and just email stuff to me. And everybody who attaches to uh, PCB Way gets a special consultant uh, uh, that, you know, for some reason always appears to be uh, female. Uh, uh, who knows uh, what, but I've interacted with Yolanda Chen a couple of times before, like when we had the, the solder mask issue between the black and the blue and so forth. So I went ahead and I sent a, a thing in. I'm hoping to get a quote. And I said, well, let's try to do the PDs and the DOs at the same time. That has now gone out. Don't know what's going to happen yet. We'll find out next week. Well, hopefully. Uh, uh, and that's the story there. At a time, we're building the tiles. Thanks for being here. Hope to see you next week.